So you guys really thought we were finished modifying this gladiator? Come on guys, really? 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 Come on. What's up, Life Bright Nation? What is going on, guys? And welcome to Prescott, Arizona. It's Summit 4x4, where the foster child is going to be getting a little bit of work a done. A little bit? Guys, Holy crap, this might be the biggest part of the build so far. It is going to be a very, very busy day today. Alright guys, you just saw us wheeling out in Sedona. It was amazing. We did find a few shortcomings of the Gladiator build so far. So, we came here to Summit. These guys are awesome. They're out here in Prescott, Arizona, not too far from where we just were. We had everything sent here. We had a few things with us, but we need to go through what we have. We have these Bilstein 8100 series remote resi external dampening <laughs> bypass shocks. These are insane. These are the only one in existence right now for a Gladiator. They sent them to us, they overnighted them to us because they know that we're gonna go do a 750 mile trip through the desert and they wanted us to test them out with the full weight of our rig. And then of course, we have axle brackets to tie the Gladiator down with when we're trailering it on our giant 37 foot gooseneck trailer because turns out strapping it down takes way too long. This is gonna make that job a lot easier and we also are going to be installing today American Adventure Labs fender lights. Now remember on that last video in Sedona, we showed you guys that we were having a little bit of a clearance issue on our up travel and our stock factory fenders. So this right here is going to make that a little bit better because we're going to be able to split our factory fenders, install these, and give us some inner fender liners as well. And then of course, no overland build is complete without these doodads right here, <laughs> which is basically a rail system by 67 designs that is going to allow us to put, you know, like GPSs and tablets. phones and tablets and other things that we don't know anything about and probably won't use ourselves. But hopefully whoever wins this Gladiator will know what they're doing and be able to utilize these a lot more than we will. Now remember, we'll be picking a winner for the Gladiator giveaway in October. And you have to be an E3 off-road member in order to be entered to win. Now, if you're not already part of our premium membership, you can go to e3offroad.com to sign up and join the family. We're dropping new content every single month from lessons and courses, webinars, Q and A's, live phone calls, magazine issues, and much, much more. Guys, this thing is going to be a beast. All right, so first things first, we need to mock up these Bilstein 8100s to make sure that our American Adventure Labs front inner fender liners are actually gonna fit. If not, we're gonna have to start doing some trimming. So now, while Jesse back there goes ahead and mocks up the Bilstein shocks, just to make sure we don't have to cut anything, fingers crossed, Kevin here is gonna show you guys how to do something that we actually have never shown on video before, which is preparing to install these American Adventure Lab fender lights, which requires for us to go ahead and split these factory, <laughs> the factory fenders themselves. Now keep in mind, you cannot split all fenders. All fenders the from sports. factory are not made alike. Just the sports, but the Sport S, the Sahara, and the Rubicon, should all be splittable. Basically, if you wanna know whether or not you are capable of splitting your fender, just go look at them. Okay, so if this is all solid plastic, you cannot split it. If you have this line right here, then you can split your light. Now, American Adventure Labs makes a different bracket for each kind of fender because the Sahara, the Sport S, and the Rubicon are all shaped differently, so you need to make sure that you order the right one for your vehicle. Okay, first start by getting your little clip trim tool. Trim tool. You're gonna wanna remove all these little black pieces that come along here i've already done a few of them here's the last two that are needed and that's it so now the rest 
that's holding it in are these little plastic rib nuts. Now, please bear in mind that what you are about to see is not for the faint of heart. So if you don't have a strong <laughs> stomach, I suggest you turn the TV off right now. <laughs> and you just need to drill these guys out. These guys. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> now you're gonna unscrew this little Phillips right here. Just a little bit, take it and just pull up. Now your light is exposed and you have a bunch of torque screws in here that are T25s. So what you wanna do, is unplug your light bulb, unplug your light bulb, and then come in here. Torx there, Torx in there. I got a Torx, you got a Torx. There's another Torx right there. Torx right there. That gets out of your way. You got two more Torx. Up there. There. And now comes the good part. All right, so now you can't be afraid of it. Best way is to grab this right here and kind of peel it back some, and you'll have this little kind of tab pop out. And you kind of just have to work it. Ah. Work, ah, oh, there we go. See, it's plastic welded on right there. And so that's what you're gonna do is break all these plastic, see all these squares? These are all plastic welds. There you go. Ta -da! Now, one last thing. So you're gonna go through and you're gonna cut all these tabs off. Just bend these guys and then cut them off. So a lot of people are always asking us what type of fenders we're running on our Rubicon, the stepchild, which is pretty funny because they're literally just the factory fenders. They're just split. Now in this situation, we're not gonna have quite as high of a fender as the factory Rubicon fenders because those are high rise, gives you a little bit more up travel space, but you are still gonna be saving that much space in up travel. Okay, so Jesse's gone ahead and mocked up the shocks, but before we go ahead and install them, I wanna take a minute to kind of actually go over what exactly these Bilstein bypass shocks are and how they work. So what I'm holding here is actually one of the rear shocks. And basically we can kind of divide these into three functional zones. You have your compression bump zone, your bypass zone, and then your rebound bump zone. And this will kind of help you understand exactly how they work. So starting with your compression bump zone here, obviously there's no bypasses in this section. Now what that means is that basically you have significantly more damping force in this section right here. And the reason for that is that actually your gas force is isolated here through your compression stroke. Now what that means in more layman's terms is basically as your piston here compresses into the shock itself, all the gases here have nowhere to go. So basically as you compress those gases, your damping force becomes significantly higher. Now then you have your bypass zone right here. Now this is where all your tunability comes into play. And it's your tunability not just for compression, but for rebound as well. And Bilstein, as you can see, has these handy dandy little stickers here that tell you exactly how you can adjust not just your rebound, but your compression as well. Then we get into our rebound bump zone down here. Now your rebound bump zone also, as you can see, has no bypasses, which again means that you have significantly higher damping force. Now the reason that this is so short is that you're only dealing with the weight and the force of the unsprung weight on your vehicle during rebound. Another way to think about that is kind of consider your desire to dampen and soften that thunk that comes with topping out a damper. So ultimately what you're doing is you're not only giving a huge damping force on your compression and your rebound, but you're also getting a huge tunability throughout that compression and rebound. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah! Yeah! So you missed the exciting part, because as you can see, they're already installed, but that's because it's literally two bolts. And that's because it literally bolts into the factory position. They're a direct fit. 
Now what's really important is that you do want to make sure that you order the proper length based on the size lift that you have on your vehicle. And that's because of those zones that I was talking about before. If you don't get the right length, then you're not going to be positioned in the proper zones through the full travel of your axle. Now the American Adventure Labs fender lights and fender liners are the exact same thing we have on the stepchild, except this is for the Sport model, the Sport S model on the Gladiator. Remember, each one has a different bracket to go with it. Now, it's super simple to install. This is like the only no drill inner fender that I know of. And really the reason we like them is because of Zeus fasteners. These little clips literally just clip right on and off. I can take the fender liner off within 30 seconds flat, no problem. So we've got the fender split. Let's go ahead and remove these brackets that we don't need anymore. One down, one to go. One, one down. <laughs> okay, so you have four brackets that all use factory bolt holes. You want to put this lower fender one on and the frame bracket one on first. These use self-tapping bolts that are going to go right to those holes there. And then the two up top and the top in the corner, you actually want to put your fender on first and then put the brackets on and the fender actually has a locating tab that's going to go right through that and hold this bracket right in place like so. All right, so we've got everything installed, and what's really cool is we still have full access to both of our bypasses, which give us both finite and incremental control of adjusting our compression and our rebound. These shocks are completely tunable, which is why we got them, because it's not always gonna be the same amount of weight that we're carrying, especially in the back. So this is something that's really important here. In addition to that, you can see that everything fit really well, and we didn't have to trim much on our American Adventure Lab inner fenders. Just a little bit right in there. And of course, on the driver's side, we are running our Northridge 4x4 twin ARB compressor mount. So we did have to do a little bit of trimming right there so that we cleared the mount. Obviously on the factory stock inner fender liners, not an issue, but on these which tuck up really high and tight, we did have to make just a teeny bit of room. But we are gonna be relocating the filters for these compressors so that they're up under the hood and safely away from all the dust, dirt, rain, and everything else instead of right here up in the fender. Now we also got our American Adventure Lab fender lights installed. And for those of you who've been with the channel for a long time, you know that Kevin and I absolutely love these things. They're the same lights that we run on the stepchild. They look good. They allow you to split the fender, get more up travel clearance, and you still get that JL looking fender light which we really actually love. And 
Look what I did. I did a little trimming and was able to relocate our rock blocks so we get mud flaps still. Kevin wanted to keep the mud flaps, which I don't blame him because especially on this rig with the wheel offset that we have, the wheels do stick out kind of far. So it is important to have mud flaps, not just to keep your own rig clean and to keep cow sh off of the door handle, Kevin, <laughs> so that your wife doesn't get it on her hand when she gets into the vehicle, but also to keep rocks, mud, and everything else, not just off your own rig, but also off the rigs that are behind you. Anywho, now that we've got the front done and it looks dang good, it's time to get the rear knocked out. All right, so again, American Adventure Lab makes the install super easy, even going so far as to labeling the brackets for you. D2 means driver's side bracket number two, driver's side bracket number one, passenger side number two, and then obviously your three and four brackets can go on either side because they're exactly the same. The thing you do have to be careful though is each side is slightly different due to what's in the actual wheel well itself. So you'll notice that has one, two, three, four pieces. This one has only three. So definitely follow the instructions really well to make sure that you don't get up. Now as for the rear fender, all we pretty much did was remove the inner fender liner. You might be able to do it with it on the vehicle, but we took it off. We removed the inner fender liner without really having to do anything. I literally just pulled it off all the tabs. So as you can see, I didn't split the rear fender. I'm leaving it intact. I left all the little plastic rivets, but what I did do was I trimmed all the way to the plastic rivets to give the tire a little more clearance and because it was barely, barely rubbing. So we're hoping that's gonna work. If not, then we'll just go ahead and split it later. It's way more amusing than you would think it is. <laughs> so Brittany's doing this because the Jeep's too high in the air and I can't get past the tire. <laughs> she's taller, she's got these lanky long arms. No, you don't get a power tool, get away from the power tool. This is an extension of my manhood. What? <laughs> Okay, so you do have to take the fender off because you do need to remove fender clips, which means that you get extra fender clips to keep in the Jeep for when you break the fender clips on the trail. <laughs> <laughs> now, because we didn't split the fenders, it still has the inner brace. We have to do a little bit of cutting. All right, so we're gonna take a quick break real quick from working on our gladiator because Roger here decided to stop by. So he's a subscriber in here, we were in town, but I really wanted to show you guys his rig for a second. Okay, so he has a gladiator that looks super rad and I really wanted to show you guys this. So he has his bed rack system, but he has a soft topper underneath it, which I have not seen anyone do this yet. And honestly, it's kind of a pretty rad alternative. All right, so now that we've got a lot of the big stuff out of the way, it's time to knock out the little stuff that we have left. And Bob here is gonna help us with the manly tools and make sure that it's done right. Manly tools, right? <laughs> <laughs> Kevin says I'm not allowed to handle power tools, so that's, we're gonna let Bob do it. <laughs> No overland build would be complete without a 67 design phone mount and or GPS mount and or mounts or just about anything you might need. Full rail mount. When you're overlanding. <laughs> this, for the Gladiator, we actually got their full rail mount, which is a lot different than what we have for our stepchild. This 
is gonna go right here and it's gonna have attachments that'll let you position, slide, and orient just about anything you want and or need up here on your dash. Now for y'all's gladiator, we got these little guys here and these literally just slide right onto your rail system like so. So these little ball adapters, you can obviously have just about as many as you want and you can arrange them, slide them, adjust them however you want. And then once you have them where you want, all you do is tighten them down. I'm gonna put one kind of near me and one over here near Kevin. Look at that. And then you have handy dandy carbon fiber arms. Slide it over your ball there and you just tighten them into place. Adjust them how you want, right? Just like so. Don't lose the ends. <laughs> In this case for Kevin, what we've found with the stepchild is that these phone mounts right here, the one that actually pinks your phone, hold your phone significantly better than the magnetic ones when you're off-road and well, you're going through something that's bumpy. Well, mine used to hold on the regular iPhone 10, but I have the new 11 XL or whatever. Kevin the... basically has a tablet for a cell phone. <laughs> yeah, so it weighs a lot. And so this helps to hold that weight a lot better than the magnetic strip does. So keep that in mind Let's when you're see, choosing what type of mount you want. Look at that. Look at that. That is not going anywhere. Look at that. Ta-da! Gladiator is officially done. For, for now. For now. For now. Because, <laughs> you know, Kevin and I, we're never actually done. But keep in mind, Summit 4x4 did go over the entire vehicle as well. Yep, front bumper to rear bumper, all the suspension, all the steering, everything. They checked the fluids and they made sure that all the nuts and the bolts were properly torqued down. This is something that is so important when you're going out on the trail for the first time after you've built or installed something on your vehicle. Yeah, not only nut and bolt check, but we actually went through and put a locker on it. We put thread locker on everything. We don't want those shaking loose out on the peace trail on us because that would be a terrible, terrible time. Yeah. And of course, guys, this wouldn't have been possible without the amazing people over here at Summit 4x4. Yeah! Guys, they absolutely killed it. The Gladiator looks amazing. We're ready to go on the peace trail, but if you're ever in the Arizona area period, it is absolutely worth the drive to come see these guys. Not only if you have a Jeep, but if you have a Toyota, or really any other 4x4 vehicle that you might want them to work on, they do amazing work and we absolutely love them. You guys rock. <laughs> Holy guacamole. <laughs> that was a curb. That's so smooth. <laughs> Dude, don't try this at home. It's so smooth. So obviously the final test is driving it and riding in it and seeing how it feels now that we've got everything done in holy moly. It's a different level. It's it a, is a it's whole a different, different level. level. Now, I, I haven't had anything like this before, but I know that everything I have had doesn't compare to this. Mm -hmm. These shocks are pretty insane. And what's amazing is they're not even like tuned yet. So we, we still haven't adjusted exactly how they came in the box, which I believe is halfway on all four. So basically halfway between the compression and the rebound. And even still, the difference is night and day. These things are pretty freaking amazing. And now it's just a matter of finding that sweet spot for exactly what the weight of this vehicle is and And what you're doing everything. With it. Yeah, and what we're doing with it. So the peace trail is kind of going to be the ultimate test. We'll be able to play around with it and see exactly what we can get it to and how fast 
we can go. Which is kind of the reason Kevin got these to begin with, is because he knows he's going to want to bomb through some of these trails. Probably so. So, guys, thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Remember, you can find all your Light Bright Nation merch at lightbrightstudios.com. All of your Light Bright Nation decals at pixeldecals.com. And, of course, don't forget about E3 Off-Road, where you can enter to win this beautiful Gladiator we are driving in right now. Guys, we love you, and we will see you next time. for the entire crew here, you guys freaking rock! That's where you cheer! Send me the friend. Face plant right into the rock. Ooh. Oh! oh. oh. Did you get that? Poor, yeah, poor pup. <laughs> so uncoordinated still. <laughs> he keeps running into rocks. Too. Get him, Jelly! <laughs> what? Shh. What? What are you being so grumpy about? What? <laughs> what are you being so grumpy about?